everyone. Welcome to our midweek service here at New Testament Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Ken Parrott, and uh, on Wednesday evenings we are doing the life of Christ. We're going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together and doing the collation and harmony of those four Gospels. And tonight we'll continue on after a few congregationals on Luke chapter 15, and we're going to talk about the lost coin tonight. And uh, anyway, so at this time, we're going to sing a congregational as we normally do. And I'll be putting the words up for you. And I would like you to join along and sing with us as we sing When We All Get to Heaven. to our Luke 15 passage tonight, I did a little bit of a short hymn story that I'm going to share with you tonight, and right after the hymn story, um, we will get right into the congregational song. And the hymn story um, tonight is uh, uh, Ring the Bells of Heaven, and uh, written by William Cushing, and I hope you enjoy the hymn story let me share that with you for a few moments here. Ring, Ring the bells, bells of heaven. heaven. Great old hymn written in 1866. The lyrics were written by William Cushing. The music was written by George Root. This song was based upon a chapter in the Bible, Luke chapter 15. Contained in the chapter, there's three parables. The first parable is the parable of the lost sheep. The next parable is the parable of the lost coin. And the last and most lengthy of all the parables of the chapter is the parable of the lost son. And in each of the cases with the sheep and the coin when they were found and when the lost son came home there was great joy i want to direct your attention to luke 15 verse 7. 
I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Pastor Cushing, the writer of the hymn, he was born in Hingham, Massachusetts. After many successful years as a pastor, he was depressed. He had lost his voice not longer after his wife died. All the joy had been taken out of his life. His ministry was gone, and he wondered if his life had a purpose anymore. In this time of despair, he prayed, Lord, give me something to do for thee. Then, he was asked to write some hymns. When they were successful, he was asked to write more hymns. Musicians began sending him tunes and asking him to write words that would fit them. One day he received a tune from George Root, the famous 19th century composer. Now Root had sent Cushing a tune and asked that words be put to it. Cushing get, couldn't get the tune out of his mind. And he didn't know what words should fit. Then the words, ring the bells of heaven, came to mind. He thought of the angels rejoicing over even one person coming to Christ in salvation. No bells are mentioned, really, if you look at the scriptures and the description of the heavenly city. There's harps, trumpets, yes, but no bells. At least we are not told there are any bells. The only bells referred to in all of God's word are those around the borders of the high priest's throne in the Mosaic law in Exodus 28 and Exodus 39. Then bells are mentioned in the king of the age and Zechariah 14, verse 20, about bells of the horses. That being said, where did this idea come from? The bells ringing in heaven? Daniel de Marbell's 1887 song, When They Ring the Golden Bells, seems to allude to heavenly bells as well. Perhaps it's a projection of centuries-old practice of ringing church bells for special occasions. They chime to welcome them in a new year, to celebrate the birth of a prince, and to mark the end of a war, and so on. Well, the song is fitting. Every time someone comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that there is rejoicing and excitement in heaven. The song, I'll read some of the passages or stanzas here. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today. For a soul returning from the wild, see the Father meets him out upon the way, welcoming his weary wandering child. Ring the bells of heaven. There is joy today, for the wanderer now is reconciled. Yes, the soul is rescued from a sinful way, and is born anew of a ransomed child. In the last stanza, ring the bells of heaven, spread the feast today. Angels swell the glad triumphant strain. Tell the joyful tidings, bear it far away, for a precious soul is born again. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Tis the ransom army like a mighty sea, pealing forth the anthem of the free. Let's sing the song.
time someone gets saved. And as we look at this passage tonight, and again, just glad you're with us and we're praying for everyone, all of our members and regular attenders, and I hope you're watching tonight this Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, by the way, if you cannot watch these messages at the time that they are scheduled, they are still left on the YouTube channel. Just get to the YouTube channel. I send the links to each and every person, along with also we have a Zoom meeting, private Zoom meeting with church family at the end after the service. So again, take advantage of these things and I hope these messages speak to your heart and uh, so and I hope they build you in the faith. Amen. And uh, so um, join us Sunday morning at 11. And uh, if uh, you're a regular attender of the church, we have a private Zoom Sunday school for everyone. And uh, so all regular members, please join us for that in that private Zoom meeting, 6 p.m. Sunday night, Romans 16, we will be carrying on. And uh, also on these Zoom meetings, especially after the evening service on Sunday night and Wednesday night, we take prayer requests, we fellowship. It's a good time to get face-to-face -face interaction during this time where we're kind of many or cannot get out and meet each other and so forth. So we're glad that you can use and utilize these, these electronic tools. We got all the technology we can talk about tonight, amen, uh, in the church. So anyway, I'll be glad when we're able to see each other face-to-face -face again, amen, in person. And in the meantime, let's be faithful. Uh, read your Bible, pray, amen, pray for each other, even as I mentioned in my last message Sunday night, you know, pray for me, pray with me, amen, we should strive together in our prayers together, amen, and so let's continue praying for each other, keep everyone in prayer, and especially those on the front lines of our health care, and people in emergency, police, and ambulance, and fire, and government workers, and government leaders, and so forth. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, let's uh, get to our Bible study tonight, and uh, we're going to look at Luke 15. We're going to look at the parable of the lost coin. I'll do a little quick review, and uh, then we'll get into the main meat of the message tonight. So Luke chapter 15, if you could find that in your Bible, Luke 15, verses 8 through 10, verses 8 through 10, Luke 15. And again, as we sang the, the last song there, ring the bells of heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's joy in heaven. And uh, so let's look at the passage, verse 8, uh, Luke 15. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? Verse 9. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. Amen. For I have found the peace which I had lost. Verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Let's pray tonight. Father, bless your word. Bless our time together. Speak to hearts. Meet with needs, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, if there be anyone who doesn't know you as a personal Savior, Lord, through these messages on the channel, God, help them to come to that saving knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, speak to their hearts. For believers, Lord God, strengthen us. Help us to not be like the Pharisees, Lord God, uh, that are worse. And the scribes were murmuring, complaining, and so mean-spirited and critical to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to have a right spirit. Lord God, I just pray that you would help us to have joy and rejoice. Lord God, rejoice in the salvation of others and, and get excited about that, Lord God. So help us, Lord God. We need your help and your strength. Speak to hearts, meet with each and every need. May your way and will be performed in each and every life. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's do a quick review tonight. We'll go over a couple of things. This, this whole chapter is in response um, 
to the publicans and the sinners that Jesus was ministering to. In verse 2, the Bible says the Pharisees and scribes, they complained. They had a mean spirit and a critical spirit. Those are some of the marks of the Pharisees and the scribes. And they said the question, the statement was, this man received the sinners and eateth with them. And so they were upset that Jesus was associating with these people that they would consider not worthy to be talked to. And of course, Christ Jesus reached out to people, people that were rejected of society. And God tells us today, tonight, that you and I as believers ought to reach out to people who don't know Jesus Christ. We've got to look beyond the external appearance of people. and We've got to realize there's a heart in there. There is a soul in there, and they need Jesus Christ. Amen? And uh, so, anyway, his response, first of all, was the parable of the lost sheep. We mentioned that. There was a hundred sheep. Uh, one was astray. One had wandered out of the way. And uh, the shepherd went looking, leaving the 90 and 9, and went after the one. And uh, found the sheep, brought him back rejoicing. And um, we saw that. So that sheep was pursued. And then the next example tonight is this one that we're going to look at. Uh, the lost coin. There's 10 coins. One out of the 10 was lost. And she's pursuing the coin. She's looking, she's looking, she's looking. And we'll talk more about that. But in verse 11 begins the parable of what commonly is called the prodigal son. Uh, some call it the lost son. We know this. At the end of the story, he's no longer prodigal nor lost. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And uh, it's got a good ending, at least with the, the situation with the son. We'll have a special message just about the elder brother, which is a perfect picture of the uh, marks of the Pharisees and the scribes. He's a picture of them. But anyway, so the interesting part about the lost son of the prodigal was that he was not pursued by the father. It wasn't till uh, the father saw him coming down the road that when he saw him coming, he finally, the Bible says, he ran after the son. But as far as we know from reading this passage, he never once communicated with the son in the far country. He waited till he came to himself. And when he came to himself, his son made that journey back home. Amen. And that's probably a tough thing to do, as we'll talk some more, Lord willing, next week and subsequent weeks about that. It may take, a, may take at least two weeks, maybe three. It depends. So let's uh, zero in here on the parable of the lost coin. So the first one with the sheep, we see there was a wanderer, okay? Uh, the sheep had gone astray, and the shepherd needed to bring them home. Here is a, an example of a coin. Um, so the Lord looked at, there was ten coins here this woman had, and she lost a coin. And so anyway, let's look at this here. Verse 8, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose? So she lost the piece. You lose something? Amen? You can't find something? Well, she's looking. And doth not light a candle, so she's got a light. Our vernacular today, we got flashlights and all these different uh, things and tools to do that. She's got a, a light. She's sweeping the house, and she's seeking diligently to find it. Where is it? Where did it, where did it go? Where did it go? Um, so it's lost. It's made out of silver. And it's something of value, okay? Interesting, think about the coin. The coin has the superscription of a, a, a figure head of a government of a country and so forth. In this case, being Roman, let's say Christ is using this example. He even talks about it in the Gospels when they quiz him on, hey, uh, Jesus, what should we do here? Should we give tribute to Caesar? And uh, anyway, his response, of course, was, Twofold, Render the, he said, show me the coin. Whose superscription's on the coin? Whose head is on there? And they said, you know, the Roman, the Roman emperor. Uh, so he says, give to Caesar. Caesar, that which is Caesar's. But he said this, interesting. Give to God what is God's. As we talked about giving in Romans 15, two, uh, two, uh, a week or so ago. You know, there's a part that is the government that comes out of your paycheck 
the taxes and all that. And that is another part that we ought to remember God because everything we have came, has come from God. It came from the hand of God. God has given us everything. Amen? And uh, so we need to not forget God. So we need to give to Caesar and we need to give to God. Amen? Caesar will always get his part. Sometimes God doesn't get his part. And we ought to remember God and be faithful in our tithes and offerings, giving and mission support. Amen? And uh, so... Anyway, but so anyway, it's interesting on the coin, there is a, some kind of superscription on it, assuming the Roman Caesar um, and uh, of the king, uh, but it's lost. It has no purchasing power. It has no current value because it's lost. Okay. Until it's found. Okay. Then it makes it valuable again. Okay. Interesting. As you look at this and you look at the coin, you find out that, you know, if we can imagine that a person could be, in a sense, compared or likened to that coin, that we're made in the image of God. We're made in the image of God. And maybe, I don't know if you've ever seen some coins. You know, I got some old coins here and there uh, stored away in the house. And uh, some of them are pretty rough looking. Amen. They're pretty rough looking. They've been damaged. They've been uh, well used. Um, but you know what? It's amazing. That with that coin, there that could be brought value, amen. And that's what God wants to do with the lives of people. So, so man, we are valuable to God, and God is He is desirous to find the lost, amen. He's using the illustration of the woman, He's using the illustration of the shepherd. And again, this is a diligent, this is a diligent search. They got the light. They got the broom sweeping, trying to, they're cleaning the house, looking everywhere. You know how it is when you lose something in the house, you're looking everywhere, you're tearing this apart, tearing, oh, I've got to clean that now that I've done that. And we're doing all of that. That's what she's doing. And she's doing it till it be found. And so what, again, um, why would she seek diligently? Why would she? Again, so as we saw previously with the with the, the sheep that was lost, uh, the shepherd, he, he's looking, he's looking for the sheep. He leaves. Why is he doing that? He's persevering until he finds it. Why? Because he loves that sheep. Amen? And this woman, she's seeking diligence. Again, love is shown in the perseverance of the search. And she's searching, she's looking, she's looking by lighting the lamp and sweeping the house and, and just searching, seeking diligently to, to, to find it, amen? And uh, so, and again, um, it's found, and you know, as we have the verse behind me in Matthew 18, 11, the Bible says, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. And Luke 19, 10 says pretty much the same thing. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So in verse 9, so she's seeking it, she's looking, she's looking, she's looking. Verse 9. Now she is finding when she hath found it. When she hath found it. She calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I had lost. So again, she finds it. Then there's rejoicing. She's calling friends and neighbors together saying, come on, rejoice with me. As I mentioned last time, and the other example, rejoice with me in verse six about the sheep. It's important to rejoice with others. Again, the flesh struggles with rejoicing when someone has received a blessing, someone else. And that, that struggle is sometimes rooted in the, in the inside our hearts that why didn't I get that blessing? Why didn't I receive that? Why, God, why did Eric be getting that big blessing that I didn't get it? Amen. Sometimes that's our spirit and our attitude. And we, gotta, we need to rejoice with others. Amen. She said, come on, let's rejoice together. I found what was lost. I found what was lost. And Jesus saying to those scribes and Pharisees, come on, can't you rejoice with me? Can't you rejoice with me? I have found that which was lost. You know, the publicans and sinners, they're lost. You know, you claim to be righteous and you can't even rejoice. You can't even get excited about what has happened. Someone has been found. These people have been found. 
Praise the Lord. You know, don't ever get over the fact that the day that you got saved, if you know Christ tonight, you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, don't ever forget the thrill and joy and excitement that took place in your heart and your life when you came to know Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible, as I mentioned last week, the Bible mentions in Psalm 51, David said after he sinned with Bathsheba, he said this in Psalm 51, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore the joy of salvation, not salvation. He didn't lose his salvation. He needed restoration of the joy. And some of us need a restoration of joy in our lives especially with this virus situation, the pandemic going on, being cooped up in the house all the time and not going very much outside, doing different things only when necessary and so forth. It's, it, it, it is a challenge and uh, we need to be careful that we don't lose our joy, amen, that we maintain that. And, uh, you know, I, again, this is, this is something that we got to work on in our lives. You know, God promised us that have, we would have the joy, peace, and contentment in this life as believers. So God wants us to rejoice with him. So, and by the way, notice it says there that she says to them, rejoice with me at the end of verse 9. I have found the peace which I had lost. So she had lost the coin. She admits, I lost the coin. You know, I, I don't know how it happened, but I got, they got lost. Amen? And uh, so the sheep in the first example... It wanders in, in, in of itself, but the coin was lost by her. It was through maybe negligence on the part and so forth. So, so with the lost sheep, the attention is fashioned on, how can I say it? The, it's a fashion, a fashion, sorry, on the condition of the thing lost. The sheep has wandered out. Here, the lost coin the attention's upon the sorrow on the one who lost it. He says, where is it? Where is it? I gotta find this coin. I gotta find this coin. And uh, so look at verse 10 here. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. The Bible says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repented. There's joy. It's interesting. So in heaven, you have come up there. Of course, you've got the saints of God. You have the also people who know the Lord that have died uh, in Christ before their soul and their spirit is up there. Their bodies are still in the grave. They're up there. And it seems to indicate that when the Bible says, when Jesus gave this parable, he says that there's joy in the presence See, in the other one, verse 7, with the sheep, it says, I say to you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. So there's joy, there's rejoicing in heaven. Every time someone comes to, to, to know Christ as Savior, there's joy. You ought to have joy. Joy is happening in heaven. There's a revival meeting happening, happening every time uh, someone know, comes to know Christ. Okay? That ought to happen down here too. But he says in the other passage, there's joy in the presence of the angels. Which leads us to believe, I believe, even to include God himself. He's, 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 he's excited. He's happy. He's so excited about that person coming to know the Lord to himself. Amen. So listen, we ought to be excited. Again, the main theme through all of these things, you've got the publicans who don't have joy. They don't have joy at all. They're upset at Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, can't you get excited about, you know, Publicans and sinners coming to know me? Can't you get excited about that? So the emphasis is on the joy. That, hey, rejoice with me. Okay, someone repent. Someone's come to know Christ. Can you get excited about that? You know, they found the sheep. Can you get excited about it? They found the coin. Can you get excited about that? Then in the prodigal that we'll see next week, we'll start. The prodigal comes home, the father's excited, everybody's rejoicing except for one, the elder brother. The elder brother's upset. He's all upset. He's a perfect picture of the Pharisees in verse 1 and 2. Amen. And uh, so, in the presence of the angels, the angels, uh, again, 
uh, of God. Amen. We see the joy of God. And what's better than that? You know what? We see in the Bible Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. We see him weeping over the situation with Lazarus. The shortest verse in the New Testament in John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. Amen. We see him weeping. Amen. We also see him rejoicing. Praise the Lord. He's rejoicing. He's rejoicing over them. Amen. So thank the Lord for that in rejoicing in, in uh, people coming to know Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that. So, and notice in both of these places with the uh, situation with the sheep and with the coin, when the rejoicing is going on, he says in there, uh, in verse 7, look at verse 7, but we looked at last week. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Okay? So he talks about the fact that there's a sinner that needs to repent. Amen? People who are lost need to repent. Amen? And so this repentance is an important aspect. Some people, I don't believe you need repentance and salvation. Well, you have to argue with Jesus Christ in Luke 13. When we did the earlier passage, he says, except ye repent, verse 3, ye shall all likewise perish. Repentance is necessary for salvation. And uh, so we covered that in our Luke 13 study there. But anyway, so he says repent. So it's just not an intellectual thing. It's a moral thing. There's a lifestyle that's not right with God that needs to be dealt with. Amen? It's just not your thinking. It's also your living that needs to be addressed. And uh, so anyway, he mentions that. He mentions that again in verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Amen. So we see that again. Um, again, someone repenting, someone coming back and bringing things in a right relationship uh, with people or with God in this case. Amen. And praise the Lord. They get saved. Man, we ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be excited. We ought to say, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. I'm so glad that you got saved. Amen. We ought to never, ever, ever lose our joy over hearing about others coming to know Jesus Christ. You know, in the time that we're living in right now, as I'm doing these YouTube videos, it is imperative that believers uh, tonight understand the great need that's out there tonight. And also, there's a great opportunity, a great opportunity for people to come to know the Lord. They need Christ. People have opportunity if they want if their heart is tender to the things of God, and if they're seeking out God right now in their life, God is obligated to get the truth to them. And uh, if their heart is sensitive to that, God will deliver that truth to them. Amen? We need to pray that God would work in people's hearts, that they would come to know Jesus Christ at this time. The gospel is being given out. It is being given out more than ever I believe through the internet because so many people are connected tonight. People are connected. We got our cell phones. We got our personal devices. We got the tablets and computers and smart TVs. We got the whole thing. We got everything. And with all of this technology, yes, there's evil and wickedness on the technology. It doesn't make the technology wicked and evil. It makes the person who chooses to watch the evil they're the ones who are in sin. But God says, hey, here is an opportunity for us. We're delivering the truth. And I pray and hope people will come to know the Lord. There's lots. There's plenty of opportunity. There is plenty of opportunity for people to come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God for that. And so anyway, aren't you glad? You know, through this discussion, through this looking at these passages, you look at that verse in verse 2. The Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners. This man. Who? Jesus Christ. He receives. Amen? Thank God. He receives sinners. You know, I was lost and I was found in 1974. November 18th. At 10.35 a.m. So how do you know the time and the date? 
because the gentleman that led me to Christ wrote it down. He wrote, I had a Bible. I was lost. I had read the Bible through. I was lost. I had 42 verses of the Bible memorized. I was lost. I was lost without Jesus Christ. I had not received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I was trusting in a religion. I was trusting in my good works to save my soul. And it wasn't until that day, November 18th, 1974, that my eyes were open. I was blind, and for the first time, I could see spiritually. You know, I, I thank God for that day. That day in November of 1974 changed my life. It changed my direction in this life. I am not the same person I was before 1974. I am a different person. God's changed my life. Praise God. I got, there's been a transformation that's taken place. Only God and the Holy Spirit. As I look out in the congregation when we were able to meet together and I look at people and I see all the different backgrounds and you think about their backgrounds and their history and you know, you think about all their, their testimonies and where they were and how they came to know the Lord and what were the circumstances during that time. I think to myself, boy, if, if, if we met together before we became Christians, I don't think we could sit all of us in the same room without having some kind of problem. But now in Christ, we can get along with each other. We can love each other. We can forgive each other. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's done a wonderful work. Amen. Saving our souls. Praise the Lord. Listen, God wants a tr to take a, make a transformation take place in your life. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God wants to change your life. God wants to change your life today. Amen. Thank God. So, the lost. Have you been lost and found? Do you know Christ? If you took your last breath tonight, are you 100% certain that you'd be in the presence of God? And you say, yes, I know that. Then my question is, how do you know that? If it's based upon your good works or a baptism or being part of a religion, the Bible says that is not the way of salvation. It's through Jesus Christ. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's through Christ and Christ alone. You can know Christ tonight. You can be, in a moment of time, go from being blind to seeing. You can go in a moment of time from being lost to being found. If you're not saved, you're lost. If you haven't put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross, he did everything perfect on this earth. He never sinned one time. So you need to put your faith and trust in him because we cannot do everything right and perfect. We're sinners. We're fallen creatures. We need. That's why Christ came. That's why God sent Jesus Christ. He sent him to die, take our place on the cross. He paid for your sins, all the sin of this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God showed his love 2,000 years ago by sending his son Jesus to die for you. Jesus did not deserve to die for you and me. He took our place. I deserve to be on that cross. I deserve to pay for my own sins. But Christ took my place. He was my substitute. He, would, he can be your substitute if you're not saved tonight. He wants to save you. He's desirous. Over there in 1 Peter, the Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God says, my will and desire is for everyone to be saved. That's God's desire. God is looking for the lost. He's looking. He's seeking. He wants to save the lost. If you're lost tonight, he's looking for you. He wants you to know him. As I preach the message on Sunday morning, on Resurrection Sunday, Paul says that I may know him. 
Paul knew him in a relational sense, in the sense of being born again. He, he became a Christian on the road to Damascus, but he says, you know what? I also want to know him more. I want to grow in that knowledge of Christ and in the grace. So if you're lost tonight, you need Jesus Christ. You need to be found. You can do that by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior, recognizing you're a sinner, lost on your way to hell. As I've already said, Christ took your place. You've got to turn to Him by faith. By faith. The Bible says, for by grace, through faith, are you saved. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. You need to receive Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, the moment you do that, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The Bible says, as soon as you receive Christ, you have eternal life. These things have it written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You have present tense right now. You know before you die where you're going to spend eternity. You say, nobody can really know that. Yes, you can. The Bible says to be absent from the bodies and be present with the Lord. You can, tonight, know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you could know where you're going to spend eternity. It's not based upon all the good works or the lack of good works that you've done. It's based upon your relationship to Jesus Christ. If you receive them, you're a child of God by faith. And you'll be with Him. And all you got to do, for those who don't know Christ, is call upon Him. Ask Him. Receive Him. Receive Him as your personal Savior tonight. Christians tonight, what kind of attitude and spirit do you have? As we think about others, there's people out there in this world that we look at and we look them up, up and down and we say, you know, there's things about them that bother us or whatever. Can you look beyond all of that and realize there's a soul in there? That person's made in the image of God. Can you look at them that way and say, I wonder what you were like before you came to Christ. I wonder what your problems were before you came to Jesus Christ. I wonder what things you were dealing with before you came to Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that someone took the time and then size you up visually and say, I don't want to bother with that person. You know, I thank God. I thank God in all the years I've known the Lord to see how God has worked in the lives of people. People out there in this world who were rejected, but they were accepted by Jesus Christ. Amen. They came to him by faith and received him and has changed their lives. Amen. Praise God. What a blessing. Amen. So there's a lost sheep. There's a lost coin. And Lord willing, next week we're going to look at the lost son. Read that over. Start in verse 11. The parable begins there. And the rejoicing. Look at the rejoicing. Amen. Amen. There's rejoicing going on. And you'll see that right up to verse 24. And then we're going to have to look at verses 25 right down to verse 32. Because that whole section is all in connection to the elder brother who Christ is using as an illustration to illustrate the scribes and Pharisees who are mean-spirited and critical over the publicans and sinners that Jesus is reaching out to. Amen? He's just jealous. Jealous over the rejoicing of his brother who went out into the far country and has come back. Everybody's rejoicing but one. Everybody's rejoicing. Well, listen, I hope you're rejoicing tonight in your salvation. You know, the Bible says that you and I, as Christians, we ought to have joy. Read the book of Philippians when you get a chance, when you get a moment. You read the words joy and rejoice in different forms of those two words repeatedly over and over and over again. And Philippians was one of the prison epistles. Study Paul's life and what he's going, and he's got more joy He's got the peace and contentment of the Christian life in spite of the circumstances. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, let's have a word of prayer. We'll close. And again, Lord, we hope to see you uh, 
again, help, I hope you join us again on another one of our, our times that we have to broadcast the messages. Like I said, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And uh, so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, uh, so that you can get notifications and receive this so that you can join us. Amen. And if you do happen to miss, you can always catch up and look at one of the messages there. Amen. And of course, if you've got any questions or you want to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation, please write us. Go to the website. There's links in the description down below. ntbchalifax.ca. Right there. Click that. And go to their website. Look to your left to say contact us. Click that and there's an email. You click that, it'll bring up an email ready to go. All you got to do is fill it out. And uh, we'll get back to you. Amen. If you want to know anything. Uh, if you got any questions or concerns about God, the Bible, salvation. Please write us. Please connect with us. You can also connect with our Facebook. If you use Facebook through Messenger, uh, you can do that at any time. And, uh, but again, we're so glad that you joined us this evening. And I pray and hope that uh, the Lord will bless you and uh, that God will just again protect you during this time. And that God would also open your hearts and open your eyes uh, tonight. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the truth, Lord God. I pray, Father, tonight that you would again work in the hearts of each and every one who's listening to this broadcast. Now, God, again, just uh, use us during this time in our history of our world, Lord God. There's some great need. A lot of people are still cannot be mobile. And God, I just pray you would touch the hearts to tune in in the internet through the YouTube channels where the Bible preaching is being given. Lord God, help them to guide and direct them into truth, Lord, and especially salvation. And courage and strengthen believers all over, Lord God, help us to look up to you for our joy and our strength tonight. So Father, again, just bless and work, and we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you. Till next time, uh, we'll, we'll see you again.